Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Armadale Emergency Department. Uh, and I'm just going to share with you this small video that I'm developing um, for people who would like to learn how to use ultrasound. We are lucky in this department to have two um, larger ultrasound machines in the form of the Philips Spark. Um, and I've given you a screenshot uh, of what uh, the display on the machine looks like. So I'll take you through the basic uses that you'll need when you start uh, and for questions that you may have, um, it's probably best that you ask someone when you're on the shop floor. So this is how you might find um, the ultrasound machine. Uh, it should be plugged in uh, and charging with a sleep mode on. And this is the button, which is the crescent shaped moon button, which turns on and off um, the spark when it's on the, uh, on the sleep mode. Um, and hopefully just these three icons will be visible to you. <clears throat> so you press that uh, button to turn it on uh, if it has been turned off on sleep mode. And this, if it is being turned off completely, then the best thing to do is just press the green uh, start button that you all, all know uh, that starts off the machines. Um, uh, and the machine will take around um, two and a half minutes to start up uh, from being shut down, whereas on the sleep mode, it'll just start up uh, almost immediately. So moving on, um, the first thing you want to do is press the start uh, end button um, and then to, uh, to input any text uh, just on the side here you'll find a little button that when you press there's a spring loaded um, keyboard tray and you press that and the keyboard tray comes out where you can then use um, the keyboard to put in details. Um, so once you press start end this new patient button uh, is then um, used. This is the screen that should appear. Uh, and the minimum, um, at the moment, the minimum criteria that we ask is you enter the patient's last name, first name, and the person performing um, the scan. The next screen then goes on to uh, choosing a transducer. Um, the machine holds up to three transducers. So depending on what transducers are um, installed, you'll, you'll normally have the phased array or the cardiac probe, the curvilinear or the abdominal probe and the linear high frequency probe um, always attached. So just clicking on which one you would want to use. And depending on the probe, um, you then have a screen come up with uh, particular presets. Um, so if you were, for example, to use the um, abdominal probe, uh, the abdominal or the E-fast or the fast presets are the one that you're likely to use. And in the linear probe, it might just be vascular access, superficial, um, uh, which are the two, or even lung that you may need to use. And the cardiac uh, presets are available for the cardiac probe. I've been asked if there are differences between the presets. Sometimes you'll find a preset that has been done by um, a particular clinician, and they're usually small changes in the presets, uh, which you're more than happy to use, or just use the ones that are without any particular clinician preset or uh, specifications. Once you've chosen um, all this, the next screen will tell you to save and exit. So you just save and exit and you come to this uh, uh, screen, which is the screen you're looking at there. The patient's name should appear just next to Philips. Um, the person performing will be uh, coming up here. Your preset that you've chosen should come up there for whichever probe you're choosing and the probe will be mentioned here. So just check that those are the things that you want to be using. These are the buttons that you normally would need to uh, understand. So the, 
once you're once you're in the process of scanning, I guess the most two two important uh, uses are in depth and gain. So you've got your gain by you can either just press multiple times on the arrow on the top or the bottom, or you can use the slider, which is a touch screen, to increase or decrease the gain. And this is the overall gain. If you want to in, use DTC for the near field or the far field, the midfield gain, you can again as a touch screen slide your fingers over this, depending on what uh, area you're uh, wanting the gain to be increased. The next is the depth. You can just increase or decrease the depth by sliding your finger or pressing on the buttons on the top of the bottom. The third button, which is the focus, which a lot of you might not be using. Um, and it's, uh, you will find, um, if I go to the previous screen, you'll find an X just here on most of your scans, which is uh, your focus. And by moving this up and down, it allows you to decide which level, horizontal level, you want the focus to be aimed at. The frequency button, most of our probes have a range of frequency um, and you'll see it again. Uh, let me just see. Yeah. Um, so the frequency button decides on whether you've got resolution, which is the highest frequency of that probe, general, which is mean, and penetration, which is the lowest frequency. So the lowest frequency um, will have P uh, encircled and it ensures uh, a greater penetration of the ultrasound beam, but uh, as the frequency gets lower, the resolution of the image decreases. So ideally, uh, you want to try and get it at the highest frequency that is possible for that particular patient. So use the focus button to play around with um, the frequency uh, and decide on which um, frequency suits that particular patient. Uh, the next thing is the text. In most cardiac um, exams, you don't necessarily need to pre-label as um, the images are pretty uh, distinct. But when you're doing abdominal or musculoskeletal superficial scans or elsewhere, um, where right and left might be an issue, uh, it is important for you to label um, what you're scanning. Uh, and that is done through the use of the ABC label which I'll go into in a minute. Um, this is your uh, measuring tool. Again, something that you might use to measure maybe the aorta to start off with. Um, and if you make mistakes in your labeling, erase erases whatever has been timed. Uh, the calculation will come as you um, get more acquainted with the use of ultrasound. Um, and moving on to the other side, the two um, buttons that you'll frequently need is freeze, to freeze the particular screen, uh, maybe to uh, measure, or freezing to uh, have a look at something in more detail. Remember, whenever you freeze, um, the screen freezes, but if you slide your finger up and down, it will have a range uh, of images over the last few seconds for you to choose the particular image you want to acquire or the particular image where you want to do your measurements. Uh, once you've done that, uh, you press the, but, uh, the acquire button and your image with all the calculations will be stored uh, accordingly. Um, when you're performing a scan, uh, a video loop is acquired when you press the button um, acquire. It's a prospective uh, acquirement. Uh, it can be changed if anybody's particularly keen on it but most of the scans uh, in our department are prospectively stored. So once you press the acquire button, four seconds into the future, you will hear a beep. And from the time of the button being pressed or touched to the time of the beep is what you acquire and store. As I said, entering text is you press the ABC label. And after pressing the ABC label, um, there will be a single line icon that comes up on the screen using, if you press the middle button, which is this, you can move, move that uh, text to where you want it on the screen um, and then press the middle button again to stop it where you want it located and enter the text either pre-selected or using free text um, using uh, the keypad. 
Um, once you've done that, press the ABC label button again, and that'll disappear. Um, this can be confusing, but it just takes one demonstration. So if you feel that you need um, a demonstration, just ask one of the um, consultants or registrars who use the machine uh, to just demonstrate it for you. Again, while scanning, um, as I said, you'll need to acquire certain um, images or uh, video loops. Uh, we tend to suggest that uh, a video loop storage is much better than a stationary image. Uh, so if you can, while scanning or while training, uh, just record uh, a loop by using the acquire button um, and uh, preferably if you're requiring loops where it may be difficult to ascertain uh, exactly where you're scanning, make sure you put an ABC label and uh, label the area that you're scanning so that when it's being reviewed um, by me or someone else, we can at least uh, understand what area you were in and what area you were trying to scan. Uh, remember again, freeze frame uh, is used uh, as I stated earlier, to uh, measure um, anything that you think on the screen you would like measuring. Um, for measure, again, this is uh, slightly complicated for, for some reason, um, uh, this machine. Um, when you press measure, you'll have a, um, a caliper come up. Um, by pressing the left or the right button, um, the second caliper only measures depth from surface. Uh, so to measure between the two calipers, um, you need to remember that uh, once the first caliper is in and you've um, moved it to the plate, to the starting point of your measurement, the second caliper uh, arrives only, um, should only be brought after you pressed either the middle button on the screen or the measure button again. Um, because if you don't do this, the second caliper just measures the depth from the screen. Uh, and again, this is slightly confusing to explain, but if you ask someone to demonstrate, demonstrate it for you, um, you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, uh, when you're doing multiple measurements, it's important that you, uh, once you've done and stored it, you erase uh, and uh, enter the text again uh, for the second um, measurement. Because if you don't do this, your first, text remains and you end up getting right, left, left, right, right, left, uh, as can happen. So every time you've done your measurement, labeled it, stored it, press erase, go on to your next measurement label uh, again. Um, while you're scanning, uh, occasionally you might need to change the transducer. Um, the Spark has a peculiar way of um, you being able to do that. It runs through a cycle of the transducer, unfortunately. Um, so it will, um, depending on what transducer you're using, every time you press the button transducer, it'll move on to the next transducer, uh, to the next transducer. So it'll cycle um, through all three transducers uh, in series. Uh, just keep pressing it until you get the transducer that you want to use. Um, and once you've changed the transducer, remember to press exam and change the preset because if you were doing an echo study um, using the transducer, um, the phased array, if you change to the uh, curved, curvy linear transducer, it might change to a preset that you might not be wanting. Uh, so just have a look at the exam, look at the presets that will appear on the side of the screen, choose the particular preset that you would like to use uh, and carry on from there. So once you've completed your study, you'll find that the, they'll all come up in line just across here. Um, and once those studies are all done, you just need to press end study so that the study completely closed um, and you move on to the next patient. By not ending the study and leaving the study open, um, you stand a chance of the next person coming in and just adding on to your scans. So just to be careful of that and end study once you've completed it. If you want to review once you've ended the study, press review, go on to the uh, binocular or a, 
um, magnifying glass that appears here and a list of studies that have been done will come up and you click on that and all those uh, images should, should appear and you can review them there. Cleaning of the probe is extremely important. After every exam, please uh, uh, remove any transducer covers uh, or protective devices that you've used. Uh, clean the gel, wash the probe with some water and mild detergent with a soft cloth, removing all the, all the residue. Don't use um, uh, any harsh um, tape surface cleaning wipes because they do affect the probe. Um, in the event of um, any um, procedures requiring um, the probe be touched uh, with blood on an external basis, or of course any internal use of the probe, you need to have high uh, level disinfection done. And that in our department for the moment is done by the three step crystal wipe system uh, to complete the cleaning process. Um, at the moment of this presentation, the crystal wipes are kept uh, near the blood gas machine. Um, and you'll find three colored, uh, uh, three colored uh, packets where the wipes are kept. You use the first packet, um, uh, which is the pre-clean to just uh, clean the, the probe, um, which has been dirty. And then you take out the second uh, wipe, spray the wipe with uh, the form activator, squish the form activator again on the uh, wipe, wait for a few seconds from 15 to 30, and then spend 30 seconds really cleaning the blow probe as well as the cord uh, well, um, and then rinsing it off with the rinsing wipe. Now, if you look at the blue um, spore activator wipe, in the middle, there's a sticker on that which you need to apply, um, uh, which you need to peel off and put into the logbook uh, that you're supposed to enter into whenever you've done a high level disinfectant clean. Again, uh, there will be a teaching session on this at some stage uh, during your stay with us. Um, but if not, uh, ask someone to demonstrate how it's done. Important, while the, once you've used the machine, um, please, please, please uh, put the machine back into the right place, clean it, make sure while you're uh, moving the machine that you're not running over the cords. Uh, try and see uh, once you've done and once you've plugged the, bed, the machine back in uh, to see if the um, cords are sort of not twisted uh, and kept in a nice way so it's not hanging over the side of the machine. Um, the cables have been damaged in the past and it does take a lot of uh, um, money to re repair them. Um, one of the things that uh, I think uh, you might just get shot on um, if you leave uh, any patient labels stuck anywhere on the screen. You do not, uh, and I reiterate, you never need to have a, a patient label stuck. Every patient has should have a label on their wrist. So when you want to enter your patient details, ask the patient uh, to show you the label that he has on the wrist. And that should have all the um, information that you need to enter details uh, on uh, to the ultrasound system. And please do not stick any labels on the machine. Um, we are extremely lucky in this department to have um, four ultrasound machines, uh, including two Sparks and the Lumify. Uh, look after it. It, it provides huge uh, information to us, and it's um, an essential part of the emergency department. Um, and if there are any further questions that you may have uh, regarding the use um, of the ultrasound machine, uh, ask me, find me, and I'm more than happy to go through all the uh, different things that you may require. Um, now, after you've done this, I think some of you were, were training um, to get certification, will uh, need to store your own images. I will demonstrate to you how these images can be stored uh, and importantly, how they can be stored without patient information in. 
Um, so just come and find me and we'll take it from there. Thank you very much.